Has this ever happened to you? Well, no fear, because Leak Shield is here. Stop leaks of all kinds, anywhere, anytime. Even helps you fill and bleed your loops, and at an incredible value. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. You're telling me this thing right here fills my loop for me, helps me bleed out all the air bubbles, detects leaks, stops leaks, and gives me a whole bunch of other information about my water cooling system? Okay, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to test that out. And we're gonna have to tell you about our sponsor. MSI's MPG Z590 Gaming Force motherboard sports 10th and 11th gen Intel Core CPUs, up to 5333 megahertz memory, RGB, and a lot more. Check it out at the link down below. Because of the outlandishness of this product's claims, we needed not one, but two test systems in order to try it out. One to actually plug it into and monitor all the sensors, and a second one to sit here and look pretty with absolutely no power running to any of the components, just in case the leak shield is more of a leak, leak. <laughs> Before we run it though, let's take a closer look at it. It's pretty straightforward, honestly. You've got a little display in the front, a simple menu interface with this button right here. Okay, so you got short presses and long presses. We'll show you that a little bit later. You've got your inputs for power and sensors. And then on the bottom, ah yes, this membrane. Very interesting. It's appropriately labeled do not touch because any damage or tampering with this membrane turns your leak shield into a paperweight. Its function is to allow the leak shield to draw air out of your system, creating a state of negative pressure. Not so much that if it sprang a leak, you would actually suck air into the system, but just enough to put it in a state of equilibrium so that water won't come out and air won't go in. In order to achieve this, it uses a wide array of parameters that it collects either through software or through hardware that allow it to monitor pressure, the fill level, any pressure changes, any volume changes, pump speed, and flow. So the idea is that not only will it know if you have a leak, it'll know how bad the leak is and respond accordingly. Oh, oh, right, right, sorry. And it has RGB, but not in a stupid way. This ring actually indicates the status of your system. So it's like useful RGB. You're saying all RGB isn't useful? No, I'm, yes. <laughs> So how to hook it up? Basically, there's only two connectors on the leak shield. There's a five pin, so this is USB, and you can either run to an internal header on your motherboard like we did, or you can actually power it with a battery bank using an external USB type A if you wanted your leak shield to be running, say, while you're transporting your system in your car to a LAN party or something like that. Bit of a niche use case, but hey, there you go. And then there's a second one. This one is sold separately and it allows the leak shield to hardware power down your system in the event that it detects a leak, which is pretty sweet. We don't need it though, because the leak shield can do that through software. Of course, before we even fill it, the leak shield can tell us if our system is watertight. So let's go ahead and open up the menu here and we go to test and test. Trippy, hey? It's pressurizing the system right now. It's kind of loud, but that doesn't go all the time. That's only while it is drawing air into or pulling air out of the system. So there we go. We're at 296.3 millibar. Now it's normal for even a watertight water cooling system to leak a little bit of air. You just wanna make sure it's not too much. So Aqua Computer recommends leaving the leak shield monitoring the system for a few minutes at least. And you can have a look at how the pressure is doing over time by just long pressing to get into this menu here. And do, 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 do. there it is. There is our pressure graph. If that's flat, then that's that. I opened up this valve to show you what the graph looks like if air is leaking out. Now it's time for our next trick, fill mode. That's right, pouring water in the top of your reservoir, that's for non-leak shield peasants apparently now. So we're in fill mode. We throw some water in our funnel here, lttstore.com. Got the water bottle. And then I'm gonna open up this valve and the leak shield starts 
sucking water into the loop. Oh, we top it up. Where did it go? Self-filling reservoir. Now something to note is you don't actually want the leak shield completely full. It needs a little bit of air at the top in order to function because remember the membrane and the air. Now that we've filled, we can go ahead and power on our system, including our pump. And we are going to put the leak shield in de-aeration mode. I mean, it really didn't end up with any air in it because our tubes kind of had some water in them before. Now it's time to run our fill level sensor. Just about at 100%. Fill level 73%. Look at that. Trippy. I mean, looks about right to me. And we are ready to go into shield mode. Boom. Now all that remains is to start putting holes in the system. Leak protection protected. We should be good to go. Let's start causing problems. So let's say you forgot to tighten one of the collars on one of your tubes or all of the collars on all of your tubes. I don't know. You're just, you're a scatterbrain. You know what I mean? You just, you just kind of, you threw those tubes in there and you're like, ah, whatever, who cares? So then you like, I don't know, put some pressure on the tube. Oh God. Oh, cool. It totally did it. Leakage, high pressure drop. I mean, it's bone dry though. Oops. Yeah, I should really tighten these fittings. <laughs> no water though. Whoa. We're all over the place here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> warning, warning, critical leakage. I wonder why. Maybe because the user's an idiot. Oh. Got him. It's time to take things to the next level. Aqua Computer marketing for this product says that you can just put holes in your tubing and the leak shield will not leak water. I so um, here we go. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> it feels wrong. <laughs> ah! Jesus Christ, Lance. <laughs> now that's interesting. With the drill bit sticking through it, okay, yeah, it leaked a bit. But look at that. It is not leaking. Yeah, it's straight through it, through. Damn, leak shield. You crazy. But why have two holes when you can have three holes? Ah! Okay, three holes is too much. So you can see the more holes you have in the tubing, the more water leaks out. Okay, now what? I can only, I can, I only have two thumbs. Continuing this video's theme of pushing the product to its limits, Aqua Computer recommends a few things for the leak shield. One is that you use their reservoir and pump combo, two is that you use their coolant, and three is that you use hardline tubing, which obviously helps when you're trying to precisely maintain the pressure inside a loop. We're gonna be breaking that last rule. Now, if you're gonna use soft line tubing, they do specify you've gotta use thick wall rather than thin wall tubing, and they're gonna have the exact measurements of tubing that you can use on their website. We're using thick wall tubing, and we're gonna have some fun. After we fill it, of course. It's slicey, slicey time. Ah! It's a little startling. That's okay, we can fix this. Hold on, we can fix this. I need some tape. Hold on. We're gonna fix the loop. Okay, oh, I'm so clumsy. Just gotta fix my tubing here. There we go. Oh, you're all better now, buddy. Oh, good heavens, I slipped again. Oh no, we gotta fix it again. There we go, there we go, all fixed. All fixed. You know, with the leak shield in my system, I might actually trust duct taped tubing. Got some ideas. Uh, uh, got some more ideas. Uh, come on, leak shield, do your worst. Uh, that's a big one. You can't shield my leaks. Actually, a lot of these are uh, not really even leaking. That's why they say, Always twist, never stab. We got one drop. That is 
Darn impressive. One drop. Of course, it's entirely possible the leak shield isn't doing anything, and if we turned it off, the system would still not leak. We can test that. I release you, leak shield. I actually put this fitting back in before this demo because I didn't want to. Ah, ah. Why did you do that? Well, I didn't think it would spray out quite that hard. Ah, there we go. Put the knife back in. That's why they say always quickly remove a stabbing implement. Okay, when the moment comes, it's gonna be really cool. Okay, here we go. Come on, leak shield. Look at that. Stop and sucks it back in. Now, you have to configure the leak shield through software at least once, but beyond that, you actually don't need anything running for it to perform these basic functions. It does do way more. If you have an IDA64 license, for example, it can tap into that. You can connect it to your pump so it gets data from that, and there's all kinds of cool things you can configure, like your alarm thresholds and all kinds of neat stuff like that. But at the end of the day, this is what people are buying it for. This peace of mind, and it can do it without even being connected to the computer via USB, which is dark darn impressive. Now, should you buy it? Well, it's not the most economical way to test your loop. A couple paper towels costs pennies, and if you want to go a little more sophisticated than that, EK has a pump pressure tester that costs about 40 bucks. But in terms of ongoing peace of mind, or if you're transporting your system, or if you experience huge temperature swings that actually can cause pressure inside your tubing, I, I don't know, O-rings can wear out over time. There's just nothing else like it. Absolutely nothing else like it. Just like there's nothing else like my segues to sponsors like Corsair. Thanks Corsair for sponsoring today's video. They're featuring their IQ700X RGB full tower. It's got three tempered glass panels, room for up to three 360 millimeter radiators, so it's great for water cooling, and it comes with four of Corsair's SP140 RGB Elite fans. Their rapid route cable management makes cable managing a breeze. You won't even see any of them cables. And you can learn more about the 700X at the link in the video description. If you guys enjoyed this video and you like crazy water cooling experiments, why don't we throw back to, why don't you go watch Whole Room Water Cooling? What a great project that was. We went and put radiators on the roof of the house we used to work out of. It was a nightmare. It did work though.